your mic on? <laughs> Hi everyone, Nick Kratikos of Nick's Seasonal Decor, and happy Monday. You are watching me uh, live, or the replay, more than likely the replay since we're so early on in the video, on Bodabra. So each and every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern, we are live designing using uh, the large Bodabra and the mini. So we throw in a couple bow tutorials using the mini. This is the size I always recommend to you guys that are designers and wreath makers um, because this creates much larger bows than the little one. But each week we always test a certain ribbon uh, to try to create as large of a bow using this as possible. So as you come in, always remember that Bodabra does give away a free roll of scrunchy ribbon and all you have to do is just comment down below that you'd like to win. So here is the wire right up here. Alex is behind the camera tonight, so as you come in, be sure to say hi to Alex and thank her for recording. Uh, but this roll of wire it comes in either silver or gold, and as you can tell, right on the packaging, 100 yard spool. And I love this little label that says woman owned. I absolutely love that little touch. Um, and this wire is extremely, extremely strong. It doesn't look like it. And to be honest, I was a little bit hesitant before I used it. I never used it before. And then Sandy, the creator of Bodabra, sent me a few rolls. And I was like, you know what? We'll give it a shot. Uh, and since then, I've been really pleased with how durable and strong it is. Hi, Susan. Hi, Carol. Hey, you guys. Nice to see you. So if you're catching the replay, if you're interested in the Bodabra or the wire, you can find them through our link down below. We're just going to cut a length of this wire, and we're going to place it in that slit right on top of the Bodabra. Hi, Pamela. Hi, Susie. Hey, you guys. Pamela would love to win. So I'm actually going to cut into this roll, and this roll of ribbon is going to match tonight's wreath perfectly. I'm really excited to see how it turns out. All of the ribbon we're going to be using tonight either came from Hobby Lobby, Michael's, or Sam's Club. We do have ribbon of our own, but that's the ribbon we're going to be using tonight. This one is a 50-yard spool for 7 bucks at Sam's Club. How can you go wrong? Great quality, uh, wired. All of the ribbons, are they all wired? All the ribbons are wired, but we're also going to work in, if we have time, a tool bow using some tool, and we're also going to work in a bow using some deco mesh. So we haven't done that in a long time. We're going to start off with two tails for this bow, for the wreath, since we're designing on a 14 inch grapevine, I don't want this ribbon to overpower the magnolia. So I just cut two tails, about 14 inches long on either side. Tanya says everyone would like to win ribbon. That's right. Who wouldn't? Then we'll come back with our ribbon into the Bodabra. We'll create two loops that are about three and a half, four inches or so. And I always give you guys kind of ballparks. Uh, you don't have to be specific. So if you want to create the exact bow I'm creating, even if I was to replicate this, it would still be different from the last. So that's what keeps things fun uh, and keeps us unique. Hi, Pierrot. Hi, Miriam. Hey, you guys. Hey, Danae. Hey, Danae. All right, coming back in with our second loop. And then we'll do one more loop right in the middle. And this is going to be our button loop. So it doesn't have to be nearly as long. So we're going to cut this about two and a half to three inches, work it in the center like so. Then we're gonna take the wires from either side, pull them to the middle, and pull that wire through that loop. Kale and says, ribbon's a girl's best friend in crafting. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and the, the thing is, is I love ribbon. You guys know that, and I work it into a lot of designs. Not every design, but a lot of designs. But I know people out there that are absolutely ribbon crazy, right Al? Mm -hmm. There's people out there that go crazy, over a ribbon and I mean I guess I guess I'm the same way because that's why we're getting rid of all of the ribbon in the basement right uh, because you just accumulate so much ribbon over time and they always have new styles so how can you stop so there's the bow and we're gonna hold off on making this wreath till a little bit later on that way you guys have time to come in uh, but this is gonna be the wreath for the bow so I really like this ribbon. I want to come back in with another bow. Let's do a large traditional bow using this ribbon. You guys seem to, not traditional, funky, I mean. You guys seem to love funky bows, as do I. They're dad's favorite. So we might as, show you, might as well show you how to do that. Tanya says, watching from West Michigan and got my friends on the train. Two already bought machines at Michael's. <laughs> awesome. Callie says, that's me for sure, ribbon crazy. It's an addiction. It's a real problem. And I'm glad you guys understand that. 
Pamela, so let's oh, sorry go Pamela ahead. says I'd love to see you design a bow with the scrunchie ribbon one day one day yes I know I had some rolls downstairs I gotta find where they are you guys know if I go down there now it's like going to a stranger's house because it's been so long since we've really you know designed down there I mean occasionally I think we maybe did three four lives total after moving into the warehouse down there but We'll get back to it, and we got to create a nice setup downstairs because that's the goal. I want to have a nice um, setup down there just in case emergencies, weather, or I don't feel like going to the warehouse one day or whatever the case may be. still want to have the comfort from my home. So that's three loops. Let's come back in with a couple more. Hi, Jacqueline. Hey, Jacqueline. Nice to see you. Miriam says, because of Nick and his bows, I always want wreaths with bows on it. <laughs> right? I know. But not every design requires a bow, so don't forget that. Lots of our designs, we work in bows, but I'd say 50-50, you know, you can work a bow in, and it'll look beautiful, and you don't need a bow in certain designs as well. Sometimes, actually, if we're going to be 100% honest, sometimes I think they distract from everything else you worked in. So a bow is kind of, a bow is kind of not a must, but in some designs, you guys have seen some de uh, designs we've created in the past, some designs with a big focal bow with the tails, I mean, it really makes a huge difference. So we worked in two on this side, three on the other, and it's going to show that it doesn't make a difference. So always keep in mind, the more loops you have, the more full your bow is going to be, obviously, but you might want something a little bit thinner. So this is going to be that perfect in-between where it's not too full, not too thin. You still can work in florals if you want. And you don't have to because we've added five loops. Hey, Brittany. Hey, Ellen. Rhonda would love to win. Awesome, Rhonda. Hey, Brittany. Nice to see you. Do you have a catalog of all of these different bows? So, Tanya, we post bow videos. Oh, my gosh. How, mu how, how many, Alex? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I posted a patriotic version yesterday on Nick's seasonal decor. We still haven't finished up the one using the Bodabra. Uh, but we'll get around to finishing that hopefully in the next week or so now that things aren't as crazy as they have been one day at a time but we have tons more coming your way uh, and it doesn't matter how many bow making videos we do because we constantly have new viewers that need help and assistance with bows and that is what i'm here for all right so we dovetailed all of those tails and i see we're at almost 200 viewers thank you all for tuning in if you enjoy watching me here each monday on bodabra be sure to let me know that is the biggest tip you guys can give us is when you let me know that these videos are helpful so hopefully i've been a inspired you to make a bow because i know a lot of you guys have been pushing it off and you've been nervous um and that's got to change if i can do it you can do it we're all nervous until we get used to things so give it a shot if you haven't done so yet Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Fairy. What do you Cla think? Claudia says, hi, Nick. Love everything you design. Thank you, guys. Isn't that pretty? Callie says, not long till the group opens. <laughs> That's right, Callie. Very, very soon we open up. Is tomorrow the first? Tomorrow is the first. Tomorrow is the first? Are you kidding? Ooh. I mean, February is the shortest month, right, of the year. But still, yeah, the group opens up March 31st. It's crazy that it's already March. It's yeah. unbelievable. feels like Christmas. Well, Christmas is every day for me, but uh, <laughs> it feels like it was yesterday. So how pretty is that? Simple. Is this a bow that you'd say works for year-round you, Sal? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's any neutral. Any holiday, any season, it's not too colorful. It's not too showy. It blends in with things that are a little bit toned down, kind of like my style. And then you can work in some really bright pops of color. So this tan and beige uh, ribbon work with anything. So, hey, Edna, nice to see you. Let's come back in um, with our large and make another bow. And then we'll come back and make our wreath after maybe one or two more bows. Hi, Kathy. She says, always enjoy your videos. Thank you, Kathy. We have Mary from Massachusetts. Hi there. Welcome, Mary. Carolyn says, I'm cooking supper and watching you at the same time. <laughs> Ooh, what are you cooking for supper? Um, me, Dad, and Yaya had some burgers and fries today, but I could always eat. How about you, Al? Are you hungry? I am hungry. I haven't eaten yet. You didn't eat today? Um, just some toast for breakfast. Some toast, some Ritz crackers, an apple, an orange, <laughs> and snacks along the way. chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're using this green deco mesh, and this is, I think this color is either apple green or moss green, but I've had this little leftover roll for a number of years and truth be told I'm sick of looking at it so I'm gonna show you guys how to turn just an inexpensive four inch de three inch deco mesh into a simple little bow 
come back in. Jacqueline so, says, I like that green ribbon. Right? Isn't this kind of unique? So this might not be something that I personally would add to a wreath, but I know lots of you guys can definitely make this work in a wreath. I mean, it's very pretty. Uh, something like this I think would look pretty on like telephone, not telephone poles, but lamp posts outside. Uh, it would look good on trees, you know, like tie a yellow ribbon around that oak tree. It would look pretty around something like that. You can also put it on one of those cinnamon broomsticks. Do you know which ones I'm talking about, Al? Mm -hmm. That you see at like the grocery stores that are scented. Anissa, she made homemade chili. Mmm, that sounds good. Ooh, that good. does sound very good. Kathy says 300 days till Christmas. Was it Kathy that, didn't we get a text earlier saying something like that, 300 days till Christmas? Kathy, uh, <laughs> Kathy was that you? Um, if so, I forgot to answer, but me and Dad were laughing at that. We're like, see, we know our people and our people know us. <laughs> Hi, Anita. Hi, Anita. Let's Brett says, Nick, your hair is super long. I know, I know. Should I get a haircut? Alex, Alex? No, you don't like my long hair. Never mind. Um, I think you should shave the sides but keep keep the top. She likes a mullet. Do you guys like a mullet on me, I Alex? I like a mullet. I like Nick with a comb over. <laughs> you like a comb over? Yeah. That's news to me. Yeah, Alex likes longer in the back. Casual uh, business in the front, party in the back, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so now that we've made our bow, we're going to take those wires, bring them to the back. I see we have almost 250 of you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. So before I tie it off, I want to show you guys what this looks like so far. So that's what it looks like without a tail. And if we want to work in a tail, the only dilemma is that, I mean, this roll is very towards the end. And this stuff has been sitting, curling up on itself for years. But let's see if we can work in a few longer tails. After this video, I might just have to fluff them out a little bit more. That way, they don't roll up. So think of this as a 10-yard, 10-inch uh, roll of ribbon or a 21-inch roll of mesh. I mean, um, I always tell you to save that half you know, that you have left over, and you can add ruffles to a wreath. Not a ruffle. A curl to a wreath because it curls up on itself. Uh, same thing happens with the, the narrow mesh, too. So, of course, we're not going to be adding these as curls into this bow, but you can, right? Who says you can't? Hi, Marianne. Oh, my goodness. Everyone says no mullet. No mullet? <laughs> a lot of people said no mullet. Really? Is that a big response? I mean, you can't really see his long hair until he turns his head to the side, and then you Can you see, see how it. long it is? Then you it's see it. It's yours. Trying to reconnect. Uh-oh. Okay. Are we back? Are we back? I think we might have lost you for a second. No, it looks like we're back. 264 thank you guys for tuning in so like i said these tails aren't going to uncurl unless i add a little bit of power to it if that makes sense because well that kind of looks cool too right what do you think of those kind of softly cascade cute right so this is deco mesh so it's not ribbon it's not wired and it's not maneuverable like your typical ribbon would be but that's still very cute right all right, so that's the next bow. I kind of like that. I like these kind of curling up on themselves. So what we're going to do now is make, again, another bow. I have never made a bow out of mesh ribbon. So, Carolyn, you've seen it here for the first time, um, and it's something that I don't do a whole lot of. But it's, you know, a good idea to show you guys because I know you guys are a lot more creative than I am, and I know lots of you guys can put some narrow deco mesh to use. I know we have a cup, we have a Mardi Gras version in stock on our website, but maybe I'll try that. So this ribbon came from Michael's, and it's a beautiful denim blue, but see the glitter inside of it? It has that blue glitter. And this, to me, screams beach uh, wreaths. It screams perfect with sunflowers, right? Um, for spring, you can add little accents of this with a Easter bunny. Hi, Valerie. Hey, Valerie. So we're going to do a traditional bow now. So we've done a funky. We've done a deco mesh bow. We've done a bow tie. Now it's time for traditional. Let's hope I don't get too glittery. Fairy would love to win. Alex, is there a link on how to make a scrunchy bow, says Tanya. Uh, so we actually, I don't think I've ever used that scrunchy ribbon. i got to find it downstairs. Um, and if I'm able to find it, we'll put it to use. So for a traditional bow, it's as easy as just creating a bunch of loops. So I tell you guys not to be precise on this. I never measure my loops. I always eyeball it. If it looks good to my eye, it's going to look good when it's complete. Uh, but if you do want to measure them, these loops are about four inches across. And the tails we've cut, and tails are something that I hate giving measurements on because uh, you might like them shorter or longer. But these ones are about 24 inches or so. 
Denise loves the blue. I love this blue. Hi, Marianne from New York. Hey, Marianne. Gil says, love the cascading tails. Me too. And tails can add a lot. So obviously, we're not going to get businessy um, designing with you guys. But just as a quick heads up for those of you that have businesses, and also, first and foremost, comment down below your links. I would love to see your pages, and I'll check them out later after our other two videos. So comment your links down below. Uh, but a quick little business tip is the longer the tail, the more you can charge because it really adds a lot to your designs. And it doesn't seem like it would, just cutting an extra foot on each side, but it really can. So I always opt in for longer, longer tails. I need to ask, should you still twist your ribbon even if it's the same on yes. both sides? Yes, yeah, so it's a, a force of habit for me. And I think it just kind of levels each ribbon up. Of course, if your ribbon's super thick, you might not have to. Uh, but I think by doing that, we kind of create that crease in the middle and it makes it easier to fluff personally. And it's a good habit to get into because if you just do it no matter what, you get accustomed to it. And sometimes it's important with those one-sided ribbons. Hi, Marilyn. Okay, we'll pull these tails down. Jackie says, Iowa's here. I want to win. Awesome, Jackie. Yes, Bodabra will be choosing one lucky winner tonight. So we worked in four on this side. We worked in four on the other side. Goes to show that you don't have to work odd numbers in, and you don't have to work in even amounts on either side. Fluff, pull those loops apart. We always spend a few extra minutes fluffing when we take pictures for Bodabra. Hi, Kathy. Bella's doing great. Thank you so much. Okay. What do you think? Traditional, right? Hard to go wrong with traditional. And I see we're at almost 300. Let's see if we can hit 300 uh, live viewers. Carla says, love my Bodabra. Thanks for the ideas. Well, thank you, Carla, for watching. So that's just an easy peasy traditional bow. Now, should we come back in with the wreath? Hands up if you guys think we should make a wreath. Pam loves the blue. We have Patsy from Missouri here. Hey, Patsy. So here's the bow. We got our grapevines in, you guys. So we have 14 inch, like the one here for 575. 18 inch, we have ovals, squares, hearts, uh, and a really cool wall basket. So maybe next week on Bodabra, we'll use that wall basket if we have any left, because I'm really excited to use it. So let's take this bow. We'll just tie it anywhere. And these size reeds are perfect for those smaller scale projects. Uh, and if you don't want to spend a whole lot or if you're gifting this to somebody or if you want to place it on the interior of your home, you guys know my thought process with reeds on the interior. I like them to be smaller. That way they don't, you know, overpower the entire room because your wreath might be the most beautiful thing in the world. But I don't know, personally, even though I make reeds constantly and I love my reeds and I'm proud of my reeds, when I work, walk into a room, the first thing I want to see is the room. I don't want to just immediately go to the wreath. So something like this is perfect for, you know, those spaces on your wall, cabinets, you name it. So there's that bow. And before we get ahead of ourselves, we got to quickly dovetail these tails or uh, we'll dovetail. Mary and Carolyn love it. Thank you both. We have Allie watching from Wales. From Wales. Welcome, Allie. It must be really late for you. They are eight hours ahead, seven hours ahead. Not quite sure. Jacqueline says, oh great, I've been waiting for the wreaths to be back in stock. Yes, we finally got them in. They are moving fast though. So this is my first time using these. Uh, we have these in stock, item number of MTF 21446. These are our magnolia sprays or leaves, flowers and, and leaves. Uh, then we have this. Do you know the number, Alex? I think you would. The 2004. 2004. These are magnolia stems. These are buck 89. Sure on that. Oh, I almost had you. Yes. So we're going to take a couple of these first because I want to bulk up the wreath. I'm really excited about this. I think it's going to look nice. So we'll take two of these, snip them off. I can't hear you very good, says Tanya to Alex. I, I uh -oh. Have you even talked? <laughs> Let us know if you can hear Alex okay. Hi, Claire from Wakefield. She'd love to win some ribbon. Hey, Claire. Claire's only a... Hop, a skip, skip and jump away. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the <laughs> phrase I was stuck on. A hop, skip, and a jump away. Okay. Susan loves the magnolias. Me too. Magnolias yeah, are one of those too. flowers, um, especially with that ribbon. This is going to be a year-round wreath, you guys. You don't have to just place this for spring. This is something I'd say works for all seasons, all holidays, on all times of the year. So we'll break down the second one. 
And then I do have a third one, which we are going to break down and work around the bow as well. You guys know my thought process when it comes to bows. Um, don't be afraid of taking that greenery and that floral material and placing it around the loops on all sides. Even if whatever you're adding is going to be obscured in doing so, it's still important. Oh, good. Some people can hear me good. Okay, so now we'll just take a few of these leaves and work them in. Just snip them short. Thank you, Sandra. Okay. Leela says all your wreaths look great. Thank you. Debbie says such an inspiration. Thank you, Debbie. So I'll place a piece towards the inside. And this piece is going to go underneath. So we'll dip it in our glue skillet, our infamous glue skillet. Make sure everything's worked in. Pull your tails in front. Bend this down. What do you think so far, you guys? Mary says the Mississippi flower. The magnolia. Okay, so we're going to take these magnolias now. We have three we're going to work in. Gail is loving this wreath. Thank you, Gail. Hey, Angie from South Carolina. We'll place this, hyd this no, no, magnolia. I don't know how I already forgot the name of that. And we'll place it up top. Bend it in. And these leaves are wired as well, so you can manipulate those, I'd say, after they harden. I always like to give it a couple minutes. That way my efforts aren't wasted. Now we have two more. And Patty you can love that ribbon. Thank you, Patty. Tina asked, is it always best to put the bow first, then work around it? And that's a question we get asked a whole lot. And the best answer I can say is I've always been the type of person that just does, does <laughs> just does what I feel like in the moment. So sometimes I feel like adding the bow first. Sometimes I feel like working in a little bit of greenery before we, you know, jump and do that. Uh, so it really just depends on my mood. So it goes to show that you don't have to just do one thing first or another thing first uh, to achieve these effects. If I started with the, the screenery and the magnolias first, what would happen, Alex? Nothing, right? No. You'd still turn out, it'd still turn out beautiful. <laughs> but for today, since we have such large flower heads here and the bow I want it to keep a little bit smaller, it does make more sense to work that bow in first. That way when you work in your flowers, you're not creating too small of a surface area um, to place your bow on. Debbie says, this is beautiful, and I agree it is an all-season wreath. Absolutely. So I'll just poke that magnolia up a little bit so it's a little bit more in the corner. You guys are getting kind of a weird angle, but that's okay. Fluff, fluff. And what do you think? Cute, right? So pretty. So we worked in maybe a yard and a half of ribbon. So 50-yard spools really do last a long time, unless you make massive bows. Then I can't, you know, say anything. Mm -hmm. But if you do a smaller bow like this, which I think is very appropriate for this size design, right? Uh, so if we did a traditional or funky bow, using that 2.5 inch on a 14-inch frame, personally, I think it's a little bit overwhelming. Oop. Throw that out. Susan absolutely loves it. Thank you, Susan. It was so cold out a little while ago, you guys, and I wish you saw me whack these grapevines outside. Uh, we had a lot of orders for grapevines since we got them in today, and Dad, yeah, yeah, uh, every grapevine that we shook outside, <laughs> I, I did it so quickly because it was so cold. It's cold out today. What do you think, Al? Very cold. So I see we had 300 of you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are not done yet. We have five minutes remaining, which means if you haven't let us know that you wanted a free roll of ribbon, what are you waiting for? Bodabra will be choosing the winner in just a few short minutes, unless they've already chosen it. So yeah, you still got a chance. I still got a chance, so let us know. Rhonda says, very pretty. Kimberly says, love this. Kelly says, very pretty. Keep inspiring. Love it. Oh, thank you, Kelly. Love it. Very nice, says Carla. Thank you, Carla. So now let's switch over to our mini Bodabra. And I want to see how many loops we can work into this. So we're going to do another funky. So we're going to start with our ribbon. 
with no tails. And as I said earlier, you guys can actually pre-cut these ahead of time. So if you wanted your bow to be exact, I mean, this is not going to be exact, but you could do what I'm doing here, which is pre-cut ahead of time, and then use your bodabra as a hand to hold everything in place. So I cut as I work things in, but it does make more sense. I just don't do it this way, right? Doesn't it make more sense to cut it ahead of time, and then so you don't have to fiddle with it? So let's do three, four... Let's come back in with a few more. I know we can squeeze them in. So we'll snip. So it looks like we have our winner. So Marianne in Kansas City is our lucky winner tonight. So Marianne, congratulations. Let's all congratulate her. Congratulations, Marianne. Make sure you send Bodabra a Facebook message letting them know which of the colors you would like, and they'll send them your way. So congratulations. Mary Ann actually also asked, and I think right before she found out she won, can you please do a video when dad is spray painting a grapevine? Yes, I think we've, I don't know, have we done one of those before? Yeah, I think we have, but it's very self-explanatory. We'll do it for you guys, of course, but all I do is I just go out there, <laughs> hit it hard with the can of spray paint like I'm a graffiti artist, go back in because it's cold or I don't want to smell the fumes. And then that's that. Sometimes a second coat's necessary. And a lot of the times, I don't even bother with it. So if the back side's a little, if one side's a little bit less spray painted, I'll just use the other side that's revealed. Or Miriam vice versa. Says, that's me. Yes, it is. Congratulations. So yes, if you're interested in your Bodabra, order it through the link down below. And don't forget, too, to join both the Bodabra Fan Gallery as well as the Nick Seasonal Decor Crafting Community. Both groups are a great resource for other inspiration and crafting ideas. So we'll tie that off. I mean, we could have probably worked in a few more loops. And I think it's because this ribbon's very, very thin. So if it was a very thick ribbon like a thick burlap or something, it might be a little bit more challenging to work in. But for this ribbon, it's very thin, so we probably could do 10, 15 loops if we wanted to. Bonnie said she just painted one. Awesome, Bonnie. Yes, I've been a huge fan of spray painting grapevines. I don't think I'm the one that started it, but I feel like for a year, right, Alex? Especially for, like a, mm -hmm. I think it was like 2020, um, I was notorious for spray painting my grapevines. I did it to practically everything in the world, and I think they always looked good, uh, especially when you have that ribbon that matches the spray paint perfectly or flowers that do. Uh, it really enhances a wreath. So I'm just dovetailing real quick, and we'll fluff it. We'll be good to go. Snip. Snip. Bonnie says she used your supplies. Thank you, Bonnie, for your order. I'm betting it was packed by Alex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So then for the sake of the video, I do cut, or the pictures I take, I do cut off the uh, wire. Uh, and lots of you guys ask, Nick, you make so many bows. What do you do with them? We actually just give them away to our wreath customers. Uh, so we have a whole box of bows that we just give away and throw in a few in each order. So that is the final bow that concludes our live tonight. So let me know which of these is your favorite. Make sure to follow um, both Bodabra and Nick Seasonal Decor on all of our social media handles. You can find them under our names. Uh, you can order your Bodabras through the link down below. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, Sandy, for having me as a guest. Um, I think my favorite, if I had to choose, would be the wreath, just for its simplicity. You guys know I'm a simple guy, so I love that. So thank you guys again, uh, and I'll see some of you in the wreath community in just a short while, and I'll see the rest of you next Monday at 7 Eastern. Bye, everyone. Good night, everyone.